And uh, welcome to our webinar today, Winning with uh, Walmart, where we'll be giving you a detailed presentation on, on Walmart and also we'll be um, giving you some information from our sister brands, um, Clavis Insight and also um, OCR. So a very, very warm welcome today. We're really keen that this is an, as interactive as possible, so please do um, use, the, uh, use the chat function to uh, put your questions to us this morning. So a warm welcome from us at Planet Retail. For those of you that don't know us, just a, a brief description. We, um, so my name's David Gray. Um, I've been in the business now for uh, 10 years, looking after various retailers, including Walmart. Planet Retail is really a, Planet Retail R&G is really a global, um, a global business with offices and analyst teams in London, Frankfurt, uh, Boston, and also uh, Mumbai. So who are Planet Retail? Well, we're really a, a global intelligence and advisory business focused on helping FMCGs, suppliers and retailers make informed and smart decisions in a changing digital retail world. And we have products that help make go-to-market decisions and find growth in omnichannel retail and pure play e-commerce. And I'm pleased to, to announce today also that um, we are sponsoring this two-part Winning on Walmart webinar, webinar series with our fellow essential PLC brands, Clavis Insight and also uh, One Click Retail. Together, we offer the comprehensive e-commerce analytics and actionable insights supported by the industry's most accurate data to deliver a gold standard um, in e-commerce insights. So very pleased to be joined by Clavis um, on the line today. So just to, to give you a sense of the agenda, so most of today I'll be presenting, I'll start off by giving you a look at Walmart in context, its various operations, a look at some of the key strategic initiatives that Walmart has undertaken um, in recent months, and then we'll look, uh, in terms of winning with Walmart, we'll look at specific supplier case studies um, of supplier initiatives actually with Walmart and with that specific retailer. And then we'll move on, I'll hand over to, to Clavis Insight, who will give us a sneak peek of um, our, our part two webinar, which will be uh, a more detailed look at some of the Clavis research um, towards the end of uh, this month. So in terms of uh, Walmart in context, so really uh, I wanted to give you a sense of the key priorities for Walmart. So we see four key uh, priorities for Walmart uh, in terms of sort of one of the, the first key priorities, of course, is around e-commerce. Um, so a shift from physical stores to digital uh, retail. And we're really seeing Walmart look to move deeper into this digital space through actually acquisition so choosing to make acquisitions to gain increasing e-commerce capability um, we the most recent acquisition we've obviously seen is the flipkart deal um, in india and we'll go on to talk a bit more in detail about that further on and in terms of this establishing e-commerce credentials we can really see that walmart is uh, shifting capex increasingly um, towards e-commerce um, over e-commerce and tech initiatives over new store openings. And we're also seeing Walmart is shifting investment into um, store refurbishment, so rethinking some of its store formats, um, putting CapEx into things um, like the Family Salon, so that there's an image there of the Family Salon, family salon uh, pickup services, and so on. And then the very recent news we, we've seen is around an, the international restructuring. So really, um, an in, a restructuring of their international businesses, the deal between Asda and Sainsbury's in the UK, where Asda will become um, part of Sainsbury's and Walmart will hold a minority stake in the combined entity. And then, of course, the deal we've seen um, you know, in, in the last few days in Brazil, uh, where Walmart um, will be selling a majority stake in its uh, Brazilian venture too. So really, 
um, four key areas there, looking at um, a shift from physical to digital, enhancing e-commerce credentials, rethinking some of those store formats, and also um, restructuring the international division. But I wanted to give you a sense of sort of where we are today uh, for Walmart. And one of the key things that the messages I wanted to show today is that, you know, hypermarkets really remain Walmart's most um, important channel. And we can really see this from these two charts. The chart on the left shows um, the top global hypermarket and superstore operators by banner sales in 2017. And you can really see Walmart there with um, hypermarket and superstore banner sales of over 400 billion US dollars compared to the number two operator in the channel, which is Kroger with 117 billion dollars um, in this channel. So we can see there that really Walmart is a very, very, very key operator in the hypermarket and superstore space. And then if we look at Walmart's business specifically individually, we look at key banners you can see the sheer size of the Supercenter business there. This is total banner sales um, by banner. You can see the Supercenter business there, um, you know, 340 billion US dollars um, that that business, uh, that business generates. So Walmart has its roots in big box. It's still very much a big box operator. But it's now accelerating its, um, its shift towards um, e-commerce and I think a really good way to show this is this chart we've created on the left which shows the sales proportions by channel for 2012, 17 and also 2022. What you can see here is the the red area so that's the you know the big box hypermarket and superstore business is really seeing um, the percentage of sales generated through this channel decline, so 78% in 2017, dropping down to 71% in 2022. And at the same time, what we're seeing is, if you can see that orange area and also the purple area, you can see that increasing, and that's the um, online operation, bnm.com 1p and also bnm.com 3p. Um, so we're, we're forecasting that BNM.com for 1p will go from 4% of sales to almost 9%, and BNM.com 3p uh, will go from a very, very small percentage up to almost 3%. So there's definitely, it, although Walmart is very much a large store operator, they're definitely um, putting more investment and focus on um, e-commerce. And Walmart now, as we can see from the chart on the right, is now becoming more of a formidable operator in terms of its e-commerce business. We can see here that Walmart is currently um, in the number seventh position globally in terms of e-commerce operators, in terms of net sales. Um, but we, as we've seen recently, Walmart has acquired um, a Flipkart in India, and we're forecasting actually that Walmart may move up one position uh, once that acquisition uh, completes. So really becoming a larger uh, player in the e-commerce space um, as, it, as it acquires some of these businesses. And there's a number of, of drivers behind these, uh, behind this shift of Walmart towards um, e-commerce um, and also its shift to um, invest in store formats. If we look around society, I'll pick out a few of these points, I won't talk, talk through all of them, in terms of rising importance of experiences and innovation under society in the top left there. You know, Walmart's focusing on refurbishing some of its stores, putting in some of those experiences, those restaurants and so on into their stores. In terms of on the top right, in terms of te technology, ubiquitous connectivity, creating expectations around availability and speed of service. Obviously, Walmart is increasingly partnering um, with third parties to offer faster fulfillment uh, services around industry, uh, you know, if I took the second point, the channel shift towards proximity, a small box, um, the rise of digital marketplaces and shifting e-commerce structure, we can see that Walmart um, is embracing online and embracing uh, 3P marketplaces as well.
So we'll go now to look at some of the strategic um, initiatives from Walmart over the last uh, three to, to six months. And Walmart is really uh, redefining its store estate around four key uh, characteristics, four key elements of experiential, social, frictionless, uh, and also curated. I'll talk through some of these examples briefly in terms of experiential um, product education. So these are displays from Modi Face where a customer can virtually try on makeup products, so customer enhancing customer experience there. An inspirational uh, restaurant brand, Shabani's, open in some stores in the US. In terms of social elements, um, obviously the, the family salon uh, concept, which is now uh, now open in the US. Product curation, really, really very, very important. Walmart has been expanding its organics and fresh food uh, ranges. And in terms of a frictionless um, shopping experience, a lot going on here from Walmart in terms of store pickup, using automated collection towers, um, curbside pickup, and so on. So that was the, the sort of the state of play of Walmart at, at the moment around store of the future, around its store of the around its store formats and what it's doing with its store formats. But in terms of the future, um, this is obviously a very very recent initiative in terms of how Walmart is simplifying its international store network. Um, and the two obvious examples are the ASDA and Sainsbury's deal in the UK, um, where. Uh, the ASDA business will be put into a new Sainsbury's uh, entity um, where Walmart will hold a minority uh, stake. And then in addition, the deal with Advent International in Brazil, where Walmart will hold a minority stake of just uh, 20%. So real simplification there of some of Walmart's international operations and also a move to work with some local partners. And in terms of uh, e-commerce and digital ecosystem, so this is um, Walmart's digital ecosystem as it stands today. You can see there's a lot on there. You know, Walmart is an extremely advanced operator. But there's been some, some recent additions. I'd call out um, the deal with Flipkart. So if you looked at under commerce platforms, we've added Flipkart to the uh, commerce platforms that Walmart operates. In terms of logistics and fulfillment, down in the bottom right-hand quarter of the chart, we've seen um, extension of partnerships with fulfillment specialists such as DoorDash, such as Postmates. So Walmart's really, uh, my message really is that Walmart is continuing to build this ecosystem and add additional services and additional capabilities uh, to this, this um, digital ecosystem. And it's obviously developing this ecosystem further. And I think uh, one of the, the key sort of things that, that we've noticed at Planet Retail is an increasing willingness to extend this ecosystem through acquisition. Um, so the most recent example of that is the deal with Flipkart, where uh, Walmart has bought a 77% stake in Flipkart. This deal is set to close in 2018. And it really gives Walmart a prime position one of the world's fastest growing um, e-commerce markets. And Walmart's also investing in improving its existing um, its existing e-commerce infrastructure, e-commerce capabilities. One of the highest profile initiatives they've done was the relaunch of their walmart.com portal in the US. Um, so this is really a much more sophisticated look. If you look at the two images on the right, one's from the New Look website. The one on the bottom is the New Look website. The one on the top is the old website. You can see a more sophisticated, less cluttered look. They've also invested on the bottom left there in a relaunch of the mobile application at the same time. So really encouraging mobile purchases. And then sort of the big thing about the uh, improvements in the relaunch of the online website were that Walmart is increasingly looking to act like a non-food specialist online um, in certain key categories such as clothing, um, obviously launching a, um, a, um, a clothing store with Lord and Taylor. 
So really looking to tap into um, some of these, these non-food uh, products. And Walmart's also seeking partnerships. Um, so, so Walmart's not just making acquisitions. Um, you know, we looked at the acquisition of Flipkart, but Walmart is also seeking partners to enhance its e-commerce capability. One of the biggest partnerships it has done over the last sort of three to six months was its deal with a Japanese-based Rakuten to launch an online grocery service um, in the second half of 2018. And this service will be called Rakuten Seiyu Net Super, and it will be an online grocery service offering increased fulfillment capacity, improved user convenience, um, and also it will leverage Rakuten's big data and artificial, artificial intelligence expertise. And there will really be an emphasis on fast delivery of fresh and prepared foods. So we can see really there, Walmart much, much more willing now to go out and seek um, uh, partnerships to expand its digital ecosystem and its capabilities in the digital space. And moving on to look at supply chain, uh, supply chain and fulfillment. So Walmart is really looking to get products to customers in new ways. Um, so there's four key um, ways in which Walmart is doing this. Um, in terms of sources of inventory, um, obviously standard fulfillment centers, but also increasingly using dark stores, um, converting stores into online fulfillment centers. Uh, so recent, uh, recent moves to convert 10 to 12 Sam's Club branches into online fulfillment hubs. Uh, so very, very good use um, of an existing store asset um, there. In terms of home delivery, offering um, lots of different options. There's a growing assortment eligible for free two-day shipping, um, offering associate delivery uh, and um, also delivery direct to customers' fridges. In terms of pickup, receive options, lots of options there, in-store pickup, lockers, standalone drives, curbside pickup. And then obviously also Walmart is looking to sort of test new technologies, test new things that are going to be game changers in the future. Things like his automated pickup towers, um, which are going to be rolled out to 500 stores, seeking fulfillment partnerships, so working with third parties, um, such as Postmates and DoorDash on online grocery fulfillment in the US. So increasingly sort of testing some new um, initiatives in terms of fulfillment. This is where we stand today. Uh, and just to give you a, a bit more detail, so Walmart is seeking partnerships uh, to increase um, online grocery coverage, particularly in the US. Um, so the last quarter we saw Walmart teaming up with DoorDash, um, an online fulfillment specialist to expand its grocery delivery coverage. Um, so working with DoorDash there so that it can offer home delivery in an increasing number of uh, locations in the US. And then its existing deal with Postmates, another online grocery fulfillment specialist, uh, Walmart is, uh, has, has agreed to extend that deal. And Walmart set a goal of reaching 40% of US households. And I think really considering the geographic size of the US, these fulfillment partnerships will be very, very important for Walmart as it moves along that journey. Um, to offer online grocery in an increasing number of uh, locations in the US. And Walmart's accelerating its uh, collection tower rollout um, in the US. It uh, is now targeting um, online pickup towers in 500 stores from an initial target of 100 stores. There'll obviously be implications with this for uh, uh, packaging and labeling for suppliers. Um, but definitely we're going to see these pickup towers in an increasing number of locations. And obviously also we, we know that there's been a pickup tower trial in the UK markets um, also.
And a really sort of an important point too is around the conversion of some stores into fulfillment hubs. Now, I, I mentioned this earlier, um, but Walmart is looking to convert 12 stores to fulfillment hubs to support its online ambitions. Uh, this is a obviously a much lower, uh, a much cheaper method um, than going out and building full-on uh, fulfillment centers, so using existing stores as fulfillment hubs. And this is something that uh, you know is, is not just happening in the US. If you moved across to other markets, if you moved across to Europe, we're seeing retailers like Carrefour, for example, now considering uh, similar initiatives, so converting store space uh, to support um, online the online businesses and act as online fulfillment hubs. In the UK market, there's a number of dark stores uh, supporting online fulfillment too. So this definitely makes makes sense, and this is going to become more common. Um, in the US market over time. And in terms of um, engagement, shopper engagement and retention, Walmart is really driving loyalty by improving convenience and rewards. It's really focusing around four key areas, um, shopper discovery, so helping uh, shoppers discover new things, new products, try new things, subscription-based um, engagements, so getting customers signed up um, to these subscription-based engagement schemes. Uh, partnerships, I'll go into looking a bit more detail about the partnership with Tasty, the recipes um, provider, uh, partnership with Tasties, and then obviously also some engagement and retention schemes. So, one of the ways that Walmart is looking to increasingly engage with shoppers is some, it has uh, recently made enhancements to its mobile application. Um, it's made some, introduced new features to its Walmart app. And this is the, some of you may be aware, this is the store assist feature, um, which activates upon entering the store. And this really allows the shopper to use their smartphone to compile lists, to check local store stock so check stock in local stores also to locate items in stores so walmart's done a major mapping exercise mapping products locations in stores and that um, helps direct customers to the specific aisle within the specific store and it also calculates the cost of the shopping basket so really looking to engage customers through um, mobile uh, improvements to its mobile applications And as I, as, I, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, the, the uh, Tasty partnership, so Walmart has partnered with the Tasty uh, recipe app. Um, and, and really, this partnership allows users of the Tasty recipe videos to link through and buy related products on walmart.com. So there'll be a recipe on the uh, Tasty app, and a user will be able to link directly to um, buy related um, products um, related to to that uh, recipe on the walmart.com or the jet.com portal. So really a new path for cost customers to reach walmart.com, to reach jet.com and to make a purchase. And this is also part of Walmart's strategy to try to connect more with millennials, to connect more with younger consumers through partnerships such as this, a partnership with a recipe um, app uh, company such as Tasty. And finally, I wanted to, so we've talked about Walmart strategy, uh, you know, it's looking to increasingly invest in e-commerce development, store refurbishment, um, you know, slower store expansion, rethinking international operations. What does this mean for suppliers? And specifically, what I want to show you is a few case studies of how suppliers are working with Walmart, Walmart through some of these uh, changes to their business. So we've talked a lot about e-commerce and digital and extend, extending the digital ecosystem. So this is an example of Unilever, which has been working with Walmart to produce mobile optimized images for its Dove range on the uh, Walmart app. These are mobile optimized hero images, which really are much easier to see on the mobile application. Uh, so Unilever there and Dove have worked with Walmart and increasingly um, other suppliers will need to do things like this as um, mobile shopping becomes a bigger and bigger phenomenon uh, as it will do in the years ahead.
Suppliers are also looking at where they merchandise products in store. So this, this is an example from Hershey's in the US in terms of where it locates its appreciation bars. And essentially Hershey's has put its um, appreciation bars in an additional location um, in the store next to the gift card kiosk. So really cross merchandising to cater to different shopper missions and encourage um, impulse buys here. Um, so really, really uh, important example there. And in terms of experience, customer experience, um, augmented reality is becoming uh, more of a phenomenon. Um, we have seen uh, Modiface working with Walmart on augmented reality. So here in a Walmart store, you can virtually test makeup products. Uh, so you can see your face virtually um, if you'd applied those makeup products. And this kind of technologies will become uh, increasingly utilised in stores, particularly I think in areas like home improvement, um, those sorts of areas. And in the household sector, um, we have examples of suppliers collaborating with Sam's Club on free samples. So here that we have in Sam's Club branches in the US, US these large machines that um, offer free samples. And we can see here a, a finished product, a finish on the left there, working with Walmart on these free offs, offering free samples. Really a good way to um, engage, with, engage with shoppers and, and get um, raised brand awareness. And for the supplier, they're obviously product packaging and sizing needs. Um, you need to tailor the product size to the specific machine. So I'd just like to thank you for, um, for, for listening to this session. I'd just like to say that we do have um, extensive recommendations um, for uh, retailers and suppliers that are available in the full report. Um, so we do go on to uh, sort of look in much, much more detail in terms of how you as a manufacturer or a retailer may need to respond to uh, some of these initiatives. So uh, if you are a customer, do uh, have a look at the full report. And, and with that, I'll hand over to um, Paul Carpinella from Clavis Insights Marketing Department, and he'll give a sneak peak of part two of our winning on Walmart uh, webinar series. So over to you, Paul. Great. Uh, thanks, David. Appreciate the time. And thank you, uh, everyone, for, for joining. Um, so we're looking forward to uh, part two of this webinar, uh, where we'll dive deeper into not only our digital shelf winners uh, from Walmart search, so you've seen uh, what's at brands like Keurig, Johnson Johnson, Samsung, and Coke, apart from their rivals. Uh, on uh, Walmart search performance. And we'll also dive deeper into how you can use the 6P e-commerce intelligence framework to help drive your traffic sales and share in Walmart, specifically diving into uh, how you could optimize your uh, portfolio uh, for the click and collect challenge uh, and create a really engaging uh, product detail page which drives uh, you know, consideration and then purchase down funnel. Uh, invite will be coming out within within the next week, so certainly be on the lookout for that. Uh, thank you, David. Back to you. And we'll now hand it back to uh, David uh, for the question and answer portion of the program. Thanks, thanks very much for that, uh, Paul. And uh, apologize uh, for the delay there. And also apologies about the line. If anyone had any um, trouble um, hearing Paul on the line there, we, we do apologize. Um, but yeah, we'll just go on now to, we do have a bit of time for some Q&A. So we'll just uh, have a look at some Q and A. Just uh, bear with us.
So we've got, a, we've got an interesting question that has just come in. So this relates to the international restructuring um, around you know, what Walmart's been doing with ASDA, um, with its ASDA business in the UK, also with its Brazilian business. So does Walmart's recent deal with Sainsbury's in the UK and with Advent in Brazil represent a shift um, in its international strategy? So yeah, I, I, I think it, I think it's probably one for me, and I, I think it probably does. And I think, um, I think what it represents is the fact that Walmart is looking to prioritise e-commerce. So markets like Brazil, which is very much where Walmart has very much got a big store-based operation, I think they're just um, choosing now to prioritize e-commerce. So a market like Brazil, which will need a lot of investment and is a, is a very much a, a bricks and mortar market for Walmart. I think they're choosing now to sort of free up some of that cash, some of that capex from a market like Brazil um, to invest in e-commerce development in high growth e-commerce markets like India, for example, through their recent purchase um, of Flipkart. So I think they're, they're just really looking to pivot the business a bit more around, um, around e-commerce and around the e-commerce growth. So the question here about uh, Flipkart, about the purchase of Flipkart in India. So uh, one of the audience has said, just how big of an impact in the short term will the acquisition of Flipkart have on Walmart's overall growth strategy? I think in the short term, um, possibly not an enormous impact. Um, we know that Flipkart in India um, is not an enormous business. So if we add the sales from Flipkart onto Walmart, we're looking at Walmart moving up from a position of number seven in the global e-commerce ranking to a position of number six. Um, it's quite a modest increase there, but I think in the longer term, you know, this this really will accelerate Walmart's um, e-commerce growth in India. They'll be present in with e-commerce in one of the fastest growing markets in the world. You know, there's a massive population in India, big population growth. Um, so I think in the short term, not a massive impact. In the long term, I think a very very big impact and a very big opportunity there. Um, so yeah, I think. I think definitely really, really uh, interesting times. So we, we have um, another question here around um, Walmart's digital ecosystem. So someone in the audience, uh, thank you for this question, has asked, how has Walmart's digital ecosystem improved in the past year? By enhancing their pickup and fulfillment capabilities, how has that improved and expanded their um, digital ecosystems? So in terms of how have Walmart's digital ecosystem improved in the past year, I think a few things really. I'd say um, some of their acquisitions they've made, or, or so, sorry, not so acquisitions, some of their partnerships they've made in the US have been quite key. Uh, partnerships with DoorDash, with Postmates on online grocery fulfillment. So I think they're really increasingly looking to um, work with fulfillment partners to ensure wider geographical coverage um, in the US. So that's really expanding their ecosystem. Also more willing to, to make acquisitions to expand their ecosystem and, and their capabilities, such as their deal um, with, with Flipkart. And then doing some really innovative stuff around pickup. Uh, so those automated collection towers uh, we've seen in the US, we've also seen them in Asda in the UK now. So some innovation around pickup, you know, really looking to make the customer experience better and enable a, a faster customer pickup process. But also, you know, a potential benefit for Walmart in terms of reduced labor costs, um, you know, having machines deal with the pickup process rather than a desk man by actual people um, as well. Okay, so um, I think we um, 
we don't have any more questions coming in at the moment um but i'd really just like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining today it's been great to have you all on the line and if you are a um planet retail customer and you do have any further follow-up questions then please please do get in touch and we'll endeavor to um to get back to you uh, so uh, have a very very good rest of the day uh, if you're in the us and a very good evening um, if you're in europe thank you very much